Okay, so we're going to look at another example of sketching a curve using the information that we have. The first one was relatively easy. Um, this one is going to be just a slightly, slightly more difficult. Okay, so what we have, maybe, if I can turn on the board, sorry about that. Um, because this is a fourth degree polynomial, uh, we know that the domain is negative infinity to infinity and therefore it has no horizontal asymptotes and it has no vertical asymptotes because it's a polynomial. To find the zeros, we set each of these equal to zero, so we get the zeros are plus or minus two and plus or minus three. To find the y-intercept, we make the x is zero, so our y-intercept is going to be negative 36. To find the derivative, it's probably easier to multiply this out uh, than using product rules. So if I multiply this out, I get uh, 9x squared minus x to the fourth minus 36 plus 4x squared. And simplifying that, I can factor out this negative. So I'll have negative one-fourth in the front. And then I'll have um, x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36. And that just is a little easier to take the derivative of that. So then to find its derivative, it's going to be negative one fourth, I'll leave that on the outside, and four um, x cubed minus twenty six x, which can be factored out to negative one fourth. Sorry, I'm going to factor out an x from that. So I get negative one-fourth x, um, x squared minus 26. So to find my critical numbers, I have to either have x is equal to zero or x is equal to um, this is, this should be three, 12 x squared, sorry. So the derivative of that is 12x squared minus 26. Um, or the square root of um, radical 13 over radical 2, plus or minus. Okay? To find out our max or mins, we're going to have to do a sign chart. So we have negative radical 13 over square root of 2. We have 0 and we have positive radical 13 over square root of 2. And I know, um, I can estimate that that is going to be approximately negative um, 2.5 or something like that. Just using the calculator, I think that's negative 2.5. If I take a number to the left of that and I put it into my equation, um, so if I have a negative 5, I get um, one of the ways that you can do this, if we can do it this way. All right, so our factors are negative one-fourth x and then um, 12x squared minus 26. So if I put in negative 5, I get um, negative one-fourth x is going to be positive. Um, if I put in negative 5 here, I'm going to get a positive. So this part of the graph would be positive. If I put in a number between these two, let's say negative 1, this again, if I put in negative 1, that's going to be positive. If I put in negative 1 here, I get 12 minus 26 is negative. So this is going to be negative. If I put in 1, I get a negative. Uh, if I put in 1 here, I still get a negative, so this is positive. If I put in 5 again, positive 5, this is going to be negative, and this will be positive, so this is negative. So, I can see that I have a, I go from positive to negative, so I have a relative, um, I have a local max here. I'm going from negative to positive, so I have a minimum 
and then from positive to negative, I have a maxima. So let's just kind of summarize what we found. We found that this function, because from negative infinity to um, negative radical 13 over radical 2, we found that that would be increasing. We find from negative radical 13 over radical 2 to 0, it's decreasing. From 0 to positive radical 13 over radical 2, we find that it's increasing. And then from uh, radical 13 over radical 2 to infinity, we find that it's decreasing. Okay? We also find that the local, that it has a maximum at negative radical 13 over radical 2. And again, I put this back into the original function, and I find that that is going to be approximately uh, 1.53. Now, if I were doing this on the AP exam, I would make sure I go to three places behind the decimal. I'm just rounding now because this is how we're going to graph it. Then I have a minimum at zero. Again, putting that back into the original equation, I get zero, negative nine. And then I have a maximum, again, at positive radical 13 over radical two, and that's also at 1.5. Okay? So now let's look at our concavity. So we have to take the second derivative to look at our concavity. So to take the second derivative, I'm going to use this function, uh, keeping the negative one-fourth on the outside, um, and taking the derivative of this. Actually, I can't do that. I'm going to have to um, look at this as negative one-fourth. Oh, that is the derivative. So if I take the derivative of this, I get... Um, 12x squared minus 26, all right? So, okay, so apparently that was not a 12 there. That should have been 4. That should have been 4 there, but it's okay, I think. Um, what was that? I don't know. I guess I need to know what that is, actually. So when I took the derivative of this, I ended up with um, 4x cubed. Yeah, that should have been a 4, not a 12. So that should be a 4 here, because I took out um, just the x, so that should be a 4. Sorry about that. But those answers are correct, because I did those before I made that mistake. All right, so then taking the derivative of this, I get 12x squared minus 26. And my critical numbers then are going to be the square root um, of plus or minus, my possible points of inflection are going to be plus or minus uh, radical 13 over 6. Okay? And once again, I have to do a sign chart to see um, if they are actual points of inflection. So I will have negative radical 13 over radical 6 and positive radical 13 over radical 6. So I'm going to start by just taking 0 because that's easiest. And I put that into the second derivative. So if I put 0 into the second derivative, I get positive. So I have a negative 1 fourth and then that would be negative. So if I put in a negative... I don't know, a negative 5 into this, um, that becomes a really big number, minus 26, so that's going to be a negative, and that'll be a negative as well. So what does that tell me? That it is concave down from negative infinity to negative radical 13 over 6. And it's also concave down from radical 13 over radical 6 to infinity. Now, 
I need that point and then it's concave up from negative radical 13 over radical 6 to radical 13 over radical 6. I also need a point for this. So once again, I'm going to take this radical 13 over 6 and put it in, back into the original equation. And I've done that on my, on my own paper. So this becomes like negative 1.47 comma uh, negative 3.13 or something like that. And that would be positive 1.47, 3.13. Once I have all this information, I'm just going to graph this function. So I'm going to have to go back and forth from the screen, so you might get a little whiplash here. Let's go ahead and plot our zeros, which are plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 3. So I have a 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. I have a maximum at approximately radical 30, well, at radical 32, 13 over 2, um, but that is approximately 2.55. So 2.55 will be, this is 2 and this is 3, so about in here, and that goes up to about 1.563. So that's about in here. Um, and so I have one on the opposite side as well because it's symmetrical. I have a point of inflection at approximately negative 1.47, so approximately negative 1.5, and the y value for that is negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So I have a point of inflection here and a point of inflection here. My function is increasing on this interval, so I'm going to kind of just draw this. My function is increasing, and then it's decreasing, and it's concave down up until this point and then it goes to um, then it becomes concave up which it's hard to show concave up. Oh I also forgot that I have a zero at negative nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so here. So that comes like that. It's concave up. Then it turns to concave down at this point, and it's increasing. It goes to a maximum, and then it goes to a negative, and we draw that. So, and if you were to sketch that on the calculator, you'd see it looks something like that, probably, hopefully, a little bit better than that. So that is what that graph looks like. Um, and you can see how we can use that information to sketch a function. What I, I would suggest you do is to do this problem and then use your graphing calculator to sort of check your answers. Okay? All right, so that is it for sketching, um, sketching a function.